Mel, good morning. How are you? I'm very well, and how are you? All the better for seeing all your lovely faces. Please, please, as I'm talking, just post your questions or comments or even tips that you have got, because I know we've got a couple of gurus there, one of my very special ladies, Karen, who's um, a social media guru, is also in here, and I'm sure she will have amazing tips to share. So, Karen, please don't be shy to do that. Um, we are all here to help and support each other, ask questions, post tips, and um, I think I'm going to talk for about 40 minutes. Okay. Keep telling me if it's good or not, because if it's, if it's rubbish, I'll stop. And um, <laughs> ask questions all the way along. And then at the end, we will do a Q&A to really try and add value and have you leaving here feeling hugely empowered. So firstly, I would just like to thank all of you for showing up. And I'd particularly like to thank Anna White, because Anna, you are attending uh, my networking events with some regularity oh, and my online events regularly. So I thank you so much for your time. Um, I really appreciate your engagement and your participation. These things are much more fun when we've got people who actually participate. And Sorrento, thank you for, so much for showing up for us. And Karen, I believe that you are a Susie Bauer follower and supporter. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and I look forward to uh, hearing from you what you have to add to the conversation. So um, I think... Let's not waste too much time on admin. Over to you, Susie. Today's talk was advertised as tips to um, a, a marketing strategy to get your business online. So a strategy is a scary word. So I'm, if you don't mind, going to call it giving you some tips to get your business online. And um, I've got a few things to share with you. But firstly, for those who I haven't met before, thank you for joining a little bit about me. I am a serious South Af Southern African, born in Zambia, grew up in Zimbabwe, studied in Cape Town, studied psychology and HR, and then went into trading. And by default, got into the hotel industry in HR and then somebody spotted something I didn't even know I was aware of and sent me to Wits Business School to do um, a part-time marketing diploma over two years and born with, there was born a passion for marketing. I actually wish I knew that when I was still a student because I would probably have learned a lot more a lot earlier. But I worked for major hotel groups like Cresta Hotels, which has hotels in Zimbabwe and Botswana, then Stocks Hotels, now Legacy Hotels. I ran the Cape Sales Center out of the Commodore Hotel and the team of sales staff who were marketing the rest of the group, Namibia and South Africa in the Cape region. And then I went off on a tangent to Germany for a year and worked for SADC and ran the SADC Pavilion at World Expo 2000, which was an amazing experience. There I learned a whole lot more about the region and honed my sort of marketing strategy and communication strategy, bridging the gap between Africans and Germans was interesting. And then I came back and joined Rani Resorts I don't know if any of you are familiar with them, beautiful lodges on islands and so on, owned by a Saudi Arabian um, who's now passed on from this mortal planet. But he was an amazing man to work for, built the most amazing properties in Mozambique. And then I had, unfortunately, a reasonably serious accident, which disabled me for a bit and had to go into working for myself. And there was born an interest in online marketing, kicked off my curiosity, which became an incredible journey. Um, not all of it great, because I spent a lot of time trying to find answers with international gurus who did not, first of all, understand us, our culture, our way of communicating, and our marketplace. Our marketplace, folks, 
and I really get this, is so different to what the international gurus teach us. One of my favorite examples is you can sell umbrellas on a beach in Florida and get to drive a Ferrari just because of numbers. We do not have that in our region. Our numbers are relatively small. So spraying and praying and reaching the big market, unless you are going to go international with whatever you do, requires a few tips. And I'm going to hopefully deal with that today. So that was probably my biggest learning was not everything the international gurus tell you is truth and gold. So be aware of that. And then um, I, by default, started um, my own business. This, these are the, the businesses I currently have. Um, Higher Classic Cars is my husband's hobby converted into a business. When I first started studying online marketing in 2010, I, we were invited to help, because my husband has classic cars, we were invited to help another operator drive a whole bunch of classic cars for an incentive group at Sun City. And when we got back home exhausted, I said to him, this is nonsense. We hardly made any money on this. And actually, he, we could be doing this ourselves. So I set up a website and created um, social media pages and everything with his cars. And long story short, um, it's now, what, I suppose 10 years later, really. And he has got a full-time business driving his own cars and he's also marketing other people's classic cars for matrix and weddings and photos and videos and all that kind of thing and we have done it 100 percent ourselves online and i can tell you i have spent hardly any money if i have spent over the 10 years a thousand rand on facebook ads that's probably a lot so when i say to you that i've played this game and i understand the constraints on small business owners doing everything with a budget and working smart, I'm, I do understand it. Then um, out of that was born my business, Red Matchstick, uh, which was set up really originally to be an agency kind of scenario until I discovered that my passion for t showing and telling people how is actually what floats my boat, hence this kind of talk. Because from my experience has come a lot of learning and not only 30 years of marketing experience, but 10 years of online marketing experience. So I think I bring a lot to the table and I can help people with shortcuts, avoiding, avoiding pitfalls and traps and all those kind of things. And then just to kind of get you confident that I'm not just in... I came from hospitality. We deal with higher classic cars. I also, um, with my husband, we market a collagen product. It is in the health and wellness space. The reason I put it there is because there's lots of constraints on marketing in that space. If you guys would like to pop into the chat and tell me what your niche is, um, that would help us also understand and be able to add value following this talk about how you market specifically to the areas you're in. Because, for example, health and wellness has got lots of constraints and I've got very fixed ideas about making sure you also promote it on your own platforms because the social media platforms and so on have got a lot of rules about what you may say and where, what you may not say in this health and wellness space. And then I'm very excited to tell you about igniting your creative side I am in the process of setting up an online store. So I'm in the e-commerce scene right now and understanding e-commerce. I have decided or realized actually, and I, I, this is a tip for all of you, whatever makes your soul sing and what you're passionate about, like our Mel with her tie and dye and stuff, she's made a business out of her passion. If you are not absolutely loving what you do every day, you need to go back and visit your passion and find out what that is because there is a business idea. So my igniting your creative side sprung from my passion for coloring in, which a lot of people find quite a silly hobby. I absolutely love it. And I have spent many, many hours over the past five years coloring in. And then suddenly realized I've got all these beautiful pictures. I've got quite a lot of knowledge. 
I searched for product and found it quite hard. So long story short, I am creating an online store to niche in to people who love coloring and to make it easy to learn to get good product at reasonable prices, et cetera, et cetera. So there's my businesses and how I work now with coaching, which is my primary business, is either having online sessions with people or sitting with people one-on-one. -on -one. And my main areas of focus is finding out who your ideal customer is. We're going to talk about that today. Email marketing, because I believe it's a critical, critical tool. And I do a next steps coaching call. So if any of you are stuck, jump online and we'll see where you are stuck and break you free. Because there is no need to be delayed and to be fearful or to be wondering and asking questions that aren't, aren't answered. Hence this Q&A. Ask the questions. Let's get them answered and get you moving. And then content is critical. So content is king. If you do not put stuff out there, People will not find you and can't engage with you and can't get to know you. So content is critical. I have a free content plan that I create every month. I will put you on my mailing list, those of you who've registered. Thank you very much. That's why I wanted your address so that I can serve you more powerfully going forward. I will send you November's content plan at the end of next week. And I also have a group where I'm going to start doing some content coaching once a week in a live video. So lots of support there. I also create video clips for people because I have got video software. I understand narrative, branding, and so on. So to make it really easy for you to get your first videos online, if you're a bit nervous of live or whatever, we can do that. And of course, I do posts and other creative stuff. So that's really how I work. Um, and what I have learned during lockdown is that one's purpose is based on what one knows and the journey you have been through. And those lessons have been created to help you help others avoid the same problems. So my, my goal is not simply for you to get to the end of this but to inspire you to run with me and go with me every step of the way. I, for example, have got a client right now who created an Etsy store. We tried to do Facebook ads to the Etsy store because she wants to market to the American market. We had such problems setting it up because Facebook wasn't talking to Etsy and we kept having errors and setting up the ad. And she was getting so despondent and tearful because she's been on this mission for a long time. I don't know Etsy, so I don't pretend to know Etsy. It's not a core knowledge of mine. So we went and looked at, she ran, ran a boosted ad to Etsy store. We went and looked at the stats of the ad, and it was amazing that 80% of the traffic, the reach to the Etsy store was from Facebook and not from Etsy or any other source. So I said to her, let's just forget Etsy, do it on Facebook, I have an e-commerce capability. Let me demonstrate to you how it works. We'll put it on my site. We'll enable it. It's a Halloween promotion. We're going to go live next week and test your stuff. So I am very focused on finding solutions, getting people to move forward because she is unsure of this process. And until I can show her how it works, she's going to be cynical. So I want to create a space where she can go, oh, my God, I see what I need to do. So, guys, I hope that sort of explains to you where I am in my journey. Come with me. Stick with me. I want to help you. But let me tell you right now, I'm not a magician. <laughs> there is no magic wand solution or anything that I can offer you. I'm simply going to give you some things I know that work because definitely the bubble has burst. Everything has changed with our pandemic. Tell me in the chat, those of you who have found that things are just not working like they used to. Some are working better, some are working worse. One thing we can be sure of, nothing is the same. So what I might have known pre-March, April, and was using very successfully, I'm having to go back to the drawing board and test and tweak and vary my 
my ideas and change my ideas. So in this online space, the first tip I can give you is do not give up learning. Do not get despondent when things change. Keep learning, keep curious, keep trying to figure it out. And if you can't figure it out and you're wasting time, don't get despondent. Ask people who can help you. I had a huge issue with passwords yesterday. I nearly freaked out. I, for the first time since the beginning of the pandemic, got a bit down and worked my way through it. So I know what it's like when you're sitting in front of these challenges and you're just sitting saying, why does this have to happen? Please reach out. Don't get stuck. There's far too much to do to waste time on getting stuck. So let's get to some tips for you. The most important thing I'm going to try and do today is to create a mindset where you think about things slightly differently and you maybe kickstart, you take, go back a few steps and you maybe kickstart from a diff different position. Okay, are you happy with that? Mindset change, are you up for a mindset change? Good. So these are what I have found to always, with any problem, any situation, setting up a business, starting a new system, learning new stuff, um, and particularly with marketing. Ask the five, I call them the five, I'm a, I love whiskey, so these are my five whiskeys. The five W's are the five whiskeys. So why, what, who, when, and where. If you start with anything, so today we're talking marketing, we are applying it to marketing. But trust me, if you want to go and learn something new, if you want to go and do a new business and you start with why and then ask what and then who and all these five whiskeys, you are going to get clarity that might take you faster down the way or stop you going down a rabbit hole. So I'm going to work through each of these with you and give you some clarity on how to tackle this, and you'll understand why I say that the, the, they're the essential pillars. Once you nail these, you have got a firm foundation from which you can manage any change in the online business, in your audience, in your market, in the type of product you market. I don't care what it is. This will work. So first of all, why? I don't know who of you are familiar with Simon Sinek, but this starting with why is just a tip I want you to ponder on before you go any further after this conversation. Most businesses know what they do and not everybody knows how they do it. Some of people do it by accident. It's quite interesting. And you actually say, how did you do that? And people go, mm, well, I was quite lucky. So not always do businesses know how, but certainly very few know why. And why you do what you do is really the, the basis and the core of everything. Because if you are not fired up by your why, you will not come across as authentic, motivated, on purpose, driven to achieve stuff. Your why is what gets you through the tough times. So with my stuff yesterday, being down, I had my e-commerce e store over there on the horizon. And that's what pulled me through. I simply had to nail it. So go back and ask yourself, why are you doing it? Because if it's just for the bucks, I promise you, you're going to be doing it for the wrong reason and people will see through that very quickly. You simply have to be driven by passion. And that's where I said to you, go back and explore what makes your soul sing, what you're passionate about. In there is a business opportunity. So I'm not going to harbor on this too much. It's just, for me, the very important kickoff point of what of where you go on once you know why you are motivated to do it. So what do you do? Let's kick that off with this famous quote. People don't want to buy a quarter inch drill. They want to buy a better way of making a quarter inch hole. Can that sink in a bit? Do you get that? So most of us go very excited through our long list of features 
and all the things we do, like I gave you a list at the beginning of all the things we do, I do, but I did add why I do them and how they impact what you will get as a result of doing those. So here's the tip about what. Sell the problem you solve and not the product. A feature tells people about your product. The benefit of why people should buy what you do is what actually sells. People buy the solution. So again, go back to what. Work out what the problem is you solve. Sit and think. How do people feel after they've invested in your services, your time, your product? Here is a slide giving you some of the and it was interesting to me that all started with S for Susie. So I can call it Susie's list, I guess. But this is kind of the stuff people buy. So they're not buying your physical product or your service. They're actually buying ultimately wanting to go with a problem to feeling pleasure. And pleasure could look like being safe, being secure, saving money, having a system to do it easier, faster, quicker, a shortcut to get there quicker, or learning a skill, or getting self-esteem. A lot of people buy branded stuff and so on for self-esteem. That's why um, luxury products are so focused on gorgeous-looking people and having influencer market them because people are buying their image to get their own self-esteem or indeed buying satisfaction. So try and really focus on how you solve problems and how people will feel at the end, because that is the narrative you sell with. How do you want to feel? If you want to feel like this, I can help you. And the other good place to start looking is what your competitors do better. Why do people buy from them? So I urge you to go and look at your competitors, not to cheat and copy and look at what they do, but to see why people love them or hate them, because there is your gap. You, if you can't compete with why people, you lo people love them, find another angle, find another what we call in marketing unique selling point. And it comes back to what your passion is and what your experience is, your life's lessons. Everything you have experienced and learn from life up to this point, folks. Every single one of you are watching this. What you have learned up to this minute, somebody else can benefit from. So step into your power. Realize you have got something special to share. And for goodness sake, go and put it out there. Okay. So I hope that's got you into a little bit of the what. Now we, I want to talk to you about who. So who is your customer? Before I go to the next slide, I want you to please type into the chat, who is your customer? Just put in, I'm going to sit quiet for a few seconds. I need you to type into the chat, who is your customer? And I would love you to put, are they male or female or both? What's the age group? Where are they physically located? What is the big solution, as we've just discussed, discussed what do you offer them that they will value let's see how you do with that little exercise do you mind if i have a cough quickly <coughs> so hopefully that um has got you uh thinking about how well you know your ideal customer Okay, so let me start then. The next tip is, guys, in this day and age where everybody is online and there is so much noise, one thing you cannot do is spray and pray any longer. If you do not know who your customer is and where to find them, you are wasting time and effort which converts to money, hopefully you aren't throwing money at it as well and wasting that too. You need to know who your ideal customer is because knowing your ideal customer changes everything. It changes the way 
you frame your product. I've just explained to you about features versus benefits. It explains how you offer it, how you're going to tackle your marketing strategy. And I'm going to give you tips for that today. What is your value proposition? We've just said, what do they value? What do they want? If they want satisfaction, you talk into satisfaction, not about your other qualities or what you think you're fabulous for. It um, determines your pricing, the tone of voice you use, because that talks about who you talk to, where you talk to them, the tone you use, who you work with, and everything else is influenced by knowing your customer intimately because then you focus in sorry about the hardy dot did you get that um you focus in on your ideal customer and if it is going to expand you rely on your ideal customer to expand it for you but the more you focus into a niche in this day and age with huge noise online everybody's online the better your chances are of being heard. It's just natural energy. Direct focus on something that's where energy goes. So what do you need to know? Here are some tips of what you need to define to get to know your ideal customer better. You need to know what social media they're on. So I love it when I get all these questions. Which social media do you think I should use? Well, I... I need you to know where your customers hang out because that's where you need to go. If everybody's telling you to go on TikTok and you haven't been on TikTok to go and look if your customers are there, then I would suggest you don't just rush off to TikTok. So you need to go and look at your ideal customers. And if you haven't got any yet, go and look at your competitors' customers and see where they hang out. That's the great thing about online now is you can snoop and research all over the place. Next is go to groups they belong to and listen to the narrative. This group of Melanies is incredible. And the conversations there are amazing. Go and find other similar groups and go there to listen and learn and get into conversations. You do not go into a group to sell. It's not your group. It's not your space to sell unless the host owner of the group invites you to promote something, as many of them do on a certain day of the week. It's a very important point to become a valued member of the group who shares selflessly, like Melanie does, bringing the talks online, bringing you all these opportunities to learn from people. You value her, don't you? So why? Because she gives, gives, gives. She's not pushing her product at you the whole time. That's the way to participate in groups. Then you have to go and see who influences them. Who do they listen to? Is it Oprah? Is it um, um, Mr. Malema? Is it who? It doesn't matter who it is, but you need to go and see who they're following because that is the talk they are listening to in their heads. That is the talk you have to learn. To get through to them, you have to start talking, similar talk to the places they hang out. That is the language they understand. Finding a brand they love. It's absolutely interesting to go and research the top brands in South Africa and see who follows those brands. And very quickly, you can see who the type of market is that follow brands. That helps you either ignore a certain market or tune into the ideal market. And once people find you have a common interest, a common denominator, they start leaning in to listen because, oh my goodness, we're the same tribe. That's why branding is so important because it pulls people together in a, a, a group of ideas. What magazines do they read? What books do they read? Because you'd better be reading the same magazines and books because much like the influencers, it is about what they are learning, hearing, tuning into. And when can you get their attention? We're going to deal with that. I really want you to get nail that. One of the great um, common denominators I found, find 
um, in a market where you need people to have a bit of cash to spend money is travel. It is almost the common interest of everybody in some form of travel, be it luxury, be it budget, but people in South Africa travel. If people can spend money on your services, they can also travel. So finding a common interest on their travel um, likes is quite a good one. So I urge you, please, get to know your ideal customer better than anybody. Make it a mission to make that ideal customer a friend you know intimately, albeit somebody on paper, but every aspect of that ideal customer, when you write it up, should be known to the nth degree. Okay, hope I've made my point there. So when and what do we talk to them with? So when is very much about tuning in to where your customer is and putting yourself in their shoes. It's not about you. It's not about your business. I've made the point. It's about the solution you sell, the transformation you provide. So I'd like to introduce you to this customer journey, journey concept. Because if you tune into this, you will have people in your marketing group that are in each stage of this customer journey. You need to think about each of them and how you are reaching them with the right content for the stage they are at. Because if you try to sell something to somebody who's only dreaming, so we are now giving them a deal, pushing stuff, but they're only just dreaming of a better solution, but don't know what that solution is, you're not going to get great results. So you have to talk into the people who are imagining a better life, a better knowledge, a better um, old age, whatever it might be. And then you help them when they start seeing that they actually want to take action and they start researching their best solution. And you better make sure all your facts are available to them. So you have the facts, the figures, the, the testimonials, and you make sure it's available everywhere. Where are they going to go and research? You need to also, when you study your ideal customer, where do they go for advice, for opinions, to research? Be there. Then when they get to buying, make it easy. Help them buy. I'm going to tell you, give you a lot more tips here. And then when they're experiencing, how many of you actually still engage with your clients when they have purchased? Do you all? Because that is your happiest time, assuming, of course, that you're selling a valuable experience, a good experience as opposed to a bad experience. But you have to tune into the bad experiences too, because... If you're tuning in while they're having a bad experience, you can respond that much quicker. And no response is left unanswered, guys. That's the most important tip I give you about experiencing, is if people complain, react right away. That is the way you handle bad reviews. And guess what? They are good news because others see how you handle reviews. If you handle them well, you get a better reputation. Bad reviews, unanswered, are bad, bad news. Just take a look at Hello Peter, how people rant because nobody responds and nobody's listening. Show you are listening. When people are having a great experience, you get them to share. Because guess what? Word of mouth, peer influence is the most powerful thing you can use for your marketing. So when you create a good experience and you tell, ask people and tell people to share it far and wide, that is the most powerful free marketing you can get. The next concept I want to talk to you about is levels of awareness. And this is really, this, can you believe, dates back to 1966, but it is one of the most powerful little models I use to come back to when something doesn't work, when I've done a post or written content or done an ad or whatever, and you go back to these levels and 
try to work out who you were targeting and what level of awareness were they at. I'm going to deal with each one, but briefly, your biggest group of people are totally unaware of you or what you do, correct? But that is also the most difficult market to reach on a budget or as a small operator. So I would say as a small business, you totally ignore those people. You go, next level is people who are problem aware. So that problem you are solving, there are people who have that problem. Now, this is still a very big group because they are in that research stage where they are looking at all the different solutions to their problems. It means you've got to put a lot of content out there. You've got to be everywhere to stick your head out above the rest to say, hello, um, I can actually help you. Where I would start is here where people are solution aware. So they want what you do. And they are at the point of comparing you with others. I hope that hits true. And then you go the next level down and the next level down. These are where your opportunities lie. Let's go and quickly talk about. So number five, totally unaware. Ignorance is bliss. Very hard to reach those people. Problem aware. Houston, I think we have a problem, but we're not actually quite sure whether the problem has a solution, whether it can be solved or how it can be solved. However, the next people get to that dream stage where they now know what the solution is and how it could feel to go beyond this problem. They are dreaming of feeling better, buying cheaper, buying faster, learn, et cetera, et cetera. You know, all my Susie's S list. This is those people who are aware of where they want to go. But they are now going to start comparing offers, comparing you with your competitors. So you need to answer the question of what's in it for me. That is what they will be asking. So here you do all the reassuring, you do all the case studies, the, the testimonials, the reviews, the recommendations. You are, do your uh, frequently asked questions. You help them answer all the questions. You deal with object, objections up front. Help them make it simple to choose you. That's pretty easy to do. I'm going to talk in the strategy bit about how you can do, give you some tips about how you can do it. Of course, the most aware where a lot of people make the biggest mistake is let me have it already. They are ready to buy. Put it up front center and make it simple. I've seen far too many people where somebody's already got their money on the table and they're still trying to sell and reassure the person they're making the right decision. Take the money already. Let them buy the product. It is so amazing to me that that's why e-commerce works. Because people click on the buy now button, they know exactly what they want and they put their card in and they get their order. There's nobody interfering with, oh, are you sure you want this? Are you sure this is really what you want? Should I show you something else? The only thing they do in e-commerce is upsell. You don't downsell. And when people bomb out of the cart, you go straight back to them and say, you wanted this. You know you wanted this. Help them buy. Okay. So just another little model. So we've done customer journey. We've done level, levels of awareness. This is a famous one. I'm sure many of you know it. I want you to tune into these things when you create content for your marketing. How aware are people? How are you going to get their awareness depending on what stage they're at? So you write content for that. Are they already interested? So help them get more interested. We're going to talk about what. If any of you are asking, wondering, how do I get them interested, put it into the questions. I, and hopefully I'm going to answer it for you. And if we haven't, we will come back to that. How do you build their desire to actually buy from you? And then finally, the action. How, what content do you need to create to get them to take action? 
So many people want people, for example, to sign up and then there's no link. So they sit there going, now, I'd really like to sign up for this, but I can't see where to sign up. Call to action, your Facebook page, your website, your even your Instagram, that's hard to get call to action. Your Instagram, that little link in your Instagram bio that people use for their website. I change that weekly depending on what I'm promoting. That is where people can click to go directly to take action from LinkedIn. Give people easy way to take the next step. And by the way, tell them what the next step is. And often showing is better than telling. So that's why buttons work and colors of buttons because people don't read. So don't go into a long winded why you need to do this and what you need to do this. That's why buy now, shop now, learn more. These buttons are because people don't read and they know what that means. I'm going to the next step and this is what I expect. When they go to that next step, the what I expect better be completely what they hope to see. So when you give people a link to go and buy now or shop now, make sure you send them to the shopping page and not the homepage. Or if you want people to learn more, don't send them to a Facebook post, send them to a blog on your website where they can learn more. Make sure it's frictionless and seamless journey. Next point, where do you go? So I mentioned earlier, don't let people tell you you have to be on Facebook. You have to go where they are and especially online. Where are people searching? Where are they spending their time? That is where you need to go and put yourself up in front of them. You have to increase the chances of being seen by your ideal customer by going to them. I hope that's landed very importantly. And just this quick note about social media. Every platform is not the same. So each platform has a different purpose, different types of content, different conversations, certainly different audience. It, you decide which platform you go to when you know who your customers are. Everybody is like, but Facebook, um, the youngsters are no longer on Facebook and um, I don't know now if I must be going to TikTok or whatever. Let me just tell you one thing with Facebook. It is hugely overcrowded. It is very, very noisy. Hence, fabulous groups like Melanie's groups are where you go to get into conversations, to build a network. Groups are our new world network networking opportunities so where we used to go once a week to a networking group we now are in our facebook groups that's where facebook's power is right now the other place that's really powerful is being on your page consistently with quality unique valuable content i hope that is rung home quality unique valuable content and really, it should be daily. Why am I saying this in a noisy space? Because once people find you, they will often, even suppliers, potential customers, the bigger deal, will go to your Facebook page to check you out. So if you're not building your Facebook page as a very important foundation for your business for who you are as a trustworthy authentic person you're missing a marketing opportunity for goodness sake it's free pay attention one of my clients said to me yesterday i'm social media out i'm taking a break i said that is the most irresponsible thing i have heard from a small business owner in my entire life and as one of my clients as a coach i will not allow it so I said, you make the choice. You stop your social media or we call it quits. Because when next week comes and you now feel like strolling back into social media and nobody is seeing your posts, it's because you put nothing out there for a week. You gave people no reason to engage and you're now out of their newsfeed. Now you have, have to advertise to get their attention again. I hope that made big sense to you. And then, of course, 
The other thing is that the type of content you post in each one differs. So if you use what they call those sharing apps like Hootsuite or Buffer or um, any of those kind of sharing apps, make sure you go back to the post. It really makes it convenient. I use them, so I'm not poo-pooing them. But you share exactly the same post. So when it's scheduled, either you go back into the post on the platform on your schedule and go and tweak it to suit the platform. Or as soon as it's loaded to the platform, you go and edit the post to make it appropriate. So for example, Facebook does not like more than two to three hashtags per post. Instagram, you've got up to 30. So if you are putting 30 hashtags when you are scheduling your Instagram post to Facebook, your Facebook post is going to look very stupid and it's going to perform very bad. So start with two or three hashtags and go back to Instagram and add all the other hashtags you need to add. Then they are pretty unique for each platform. Remember the format. Facebook, people read text first, image after. Instagram, it's the other way around. People read text image first, text after. So how does that influence the type of pictures you share? In Instagram, you grab people's attention with the, with the image. In Facebook, you grab people's attention with those first words in your post. Give me a thumbs up if you like that. <laughs> Good. So there's some tips for you on social media and where to go. Um, how do you do it? So here's a bit of strategy for you. I'm... Um, hoping, uh, I hope you're happy for me to carry on and I'm not wasting your time because this is a little bit of value right here. So a simple online strategy for you. Think about this funnel and the stages of this funnel. So at the top of a funnel, we want to attract people, audience to our business. Okay, they might not be your ideal customer at that point, but the more focused you are on where you put your stuff, the more likely you are to attract ideal customers. And there are many, many different ways to do it, but it is a numbers game. The more you attract, the more you can bring down the funnel. So for those of you who've got a couple of hundred people on Facebook, you need to build that audience. I'm really sorry to say that to you. You have to build that audience. Then you have to build relationships before they convert. You cannot just, so, so many people go and put ads out there. And why are my ads not converting? Nobody's buying from you, from me, because nobody knows you yet. Nobody trusts you yet. I hope that also makes huge sense to you. You have to attract, engage with them, build a relationship before you can start selling. There was another point I wanted to make here, but I can't remember. I'll come to it. Okay, so let's talk a bit about what you do at the top of the funnel. So we call it top funnel or in marketing talk, T-O-F-U, tofu. We're not making salad. We're talking top of funnel. So search. This is where people find you in search. How do people find you in search? Sorry for you, but you need a website. If Facebook changes, Facebook is down, Facebook changes its rules. I had another client who lost their Facebook shop for three weeks and it was apparently my fault. Suddenly it's back. It was a Facebook problem. You need a website and folks, a one page website is not expensive. If a webmaster is charging you crazy rates, find another one. It, websites are not expensive any longer and a one page website is plenty all it needs to be is your owned o w n e d your owned real estate because while you are promoting on facebook any other social media platform you are building on rented real estate might be free you might have a shack on the corner, which is really what Facebook is, because you're not paying unless you add. On a website, it is your own. You are in control of it. You own it. You can say, show, and do what you like over there. And that is where you start using tools like a Facebook pixel or Google Analytics to start tracking 
what happens on that website. And there comes a myriad of info because now you can start tuning into what people like, where people are going, what where they are spending time. You can re-advertise to them, et cetera, et cetera. We won't bore you with that. That's the next step. But start with a website. Creating a blog is really valuable for Google. Google loves new information. If you've just got a website and you don't put a blog on it and your website stays the same unchanged month after month when Google comes to crawl your site, your ranking is going to go below people who are putting new content out there. Google wants the best results for their audience, wants the best experience. They want new info. Update your website. Easiest way to do it is with a blog. Search engine results, that's what that stands for, is where you come on search engine results. That matters because when people search a keyword and you are not on the first page, you are not in the decision-making basket. There's a great expression that says, when you murder somebody, where do you hide them? On the second page of Google because nobody goes there. So you have to learn or ask somebody to help you understand how to optimize your website, your SEO, put content out there. But I can guarantee you, if you have got great content on Facebook or LinkedIn and you have a website, you will appear on the first page if you use keywords because that is just how Google works. Give Google stuff to show to people. Discovery Google is your best friend. Google My Business, optimizing mobile marketing. Your website must be mobile friendly, otherwise Google downgrades it. Location marketing. Put in location. Where, because Facebook, you know, pushes um, location stuff to people in the newsfeed. Uh, Google search. Show me such and such near me. If you give Google all those things to work with, it starts showing your results. Of course, social media for discovery is unbelievable. Encourage people to share your stuff. How do you do that? Quality, valuable content. And that doesn't need, just need to be serious. It can be funny. You know the viral videos. But just put stuff out there that people love. Word of mouth is, as I've mentioned, your best. So encourage people to shout about you. Encourage reviews. Get your brand influencers, people who love what you do, to talk about you and to put it out there. And then free stuff is one of the best ways to get people to discover you. People love free stuff, and that is why there is free stuff out there, because it is to start a relationship. And then, of course, if you've got the bucks, you need to advertise on Google, certainly Google ads and Facebook ads. So there are some tips to get discovered right up at the top of the funnel. So now let's talk about engaging and building. And one of my favorite topics is building a relationship, specifically focusing on email marketing. If you think email marketing is dead, I've got news for you. I believe it is going to increase in value. As people are getting more and more noise and stuff bombarding them on social media, on search, on whatever, and you send a valuable email. And again, valuable, guys. It's not sell, sell, sell. If you do two emails a month, one can be an offer in a very nice way. I've created this. I thought you should know. The other one is just value. What I learned, um, this is my tip for the week. I really struggled with this. Like I could now do a mail and go, I really, really struggled with my passwords yesterday. And my only saving grace was my tips for how I save my passwords. That is an email that is valuable to people and will remind people to clean up the act. Okay. So building trust is critical in the middle of the funnel before you start selling to people. People buy from people and businesses they trust that land how do you build trust by sharing recommendations and reviews by sharing accolades don't be shy um, I did a fabulous talk now I say fabulous and I'm giving myself a shout out for Africa travel week two weeks ago and it's just been published by a third party I was totally unaware on business community 
I've shared that to every single platform I'm on because I'm very honored to have had my tips shared on business community. That's an accolade. Give people offers and trials. Again, the freebie thing. Let people experience what you do. If, like my free consultation, I will jump onto a Zoom with new clients for half an hour for free to see if we, first of all, like each other and to see if you think I can help you. Because there's no point signing up for a client if there's a misfit somewhere. So, and then a trial. Um, that's why you have the 14-day trial, the month-free trial, and all those kind of things. That's all part of building trust. Give my stuff a go. If you don't like it, I understand. Okay. And then education is such an amazing way to build trust. Give freely as an authority, as a real person who has got great deal of value to share. How do you do it? In emails in blogs, in deals that shows you understand people's challenges, tell them how to use your services. And by the way, why don't you try this deal? And of course, the most important of this all is being consistent and connecting. Not a single communication on your social media where people are responding to you in comments, or tagging you should go unanswered. That is plain rude not to do it because people are talking to you. And do you ignore people that talk to you all the time? So don't do it online. People want to be heard. And one of the most powerful ways you are going to um, build trust is show people you are listening. I hope that was a very good tip for you. Next Bottom of the funnel, okay, where we are now starting to sell to people. We found them. We've got our ideal customers coming down the conversion funnel. Now we want to start, and by the way, this is very often where I find it incredible when people say social media doesn't work, Facebook doesn't work, etc., because you're not taking people down a funnel. What is the next step? The next step, conversion is not on Facebook. It happens on your website, on your e-commerce site, somewhere where people can take action or making a Zoom appointment or making a person appointment or giving them a WhatsApp number. That is the next step. Whilst it's on um, social media, it is not where you're converting. You are still engaging and building in that space. So let's go to con talk about bottom funnel. So also in marketing called BOFU, BOFU strategy, which is now to convert. So sorry, I've got that wrong there. That should say convert. So sorry for that wrong slide. Um, let me just go back. Now I'm losing my spot. Where am I? Sorry, guys. Right. The most important thing on the bottom funnel is to reduce friction anticipate objections test your processes it's incredible how people run a campaign and they don't go and buy their own product it's your money go and buy your own product put it through the system make sure the system works it's only when you actually take it right through to the end you see how your autoresponders work you see what your response is your customer service throughout you realize how friction free or full of friction your processes are and that is where you lose customers when you don't even know there's a problem. So go and test your processes, even as, as much as answering your own phone. I mean, phoning your own number and seeing what happens at the other end. Sending um, automated emails after hours or sending an inquiry after hours. What happens? Do people get a response? Do people get some kind of something? All those are processes that help people down your funnel. And the lack of them is friction, people bomb out, and it's very tough to bring them back again. And then the most important point for conversion is delight your customers, not just satisfy. I choose that word with huge intent. Be the one who delights rather than just satisfies. You should go the extra mile beyond what people expect. 
it's the way you present your stuff, the branding, the, the friendliness, the promptness, the reassurance, all those things. How Sit back and think, how can I really make a customer's day today? What can I do to make their engagement with me really special? And then start making that a standard practice. Okay, so there's a little strategy for you. I hope that helps. Quick recap, we did the five whiskeys. You need to know why you're doing this and be totally invested in your purpose. Know what you're actually selling, which is the solution you are providing. Who is your ideal customer? When should you be saying what? And where do you go to put yourself in front of them? Okay, and there's the strategy. Um, I would suggest you take a photo of the slide just to remind you at the top, you're doing search, social, making sure website, increasing word of mouth referral in the middle, build your email list, keep in touch, reassure, keep connected, responding, etc., and then help them choose you to convert. Give them offers, give them guarantees, focus on customer service. So there you are. How's that? Question time. So, Melanie, I am going to unmute you. Are you? That was, Un that was absolutely amazing. Thank you, Susie. Uh, I learned so much from that. Oh, good. Um, a lot, and, a, and a lot of this information I've, I've processed before, but it, it helps to hear it in a, in a logical way chronological kind of way seriously nothing and, i said is new it's all known but it's it's kind of t picking up the simple gems that is actionable right now for small business mm -hmm. owners who are a bit stuck on what is my next step i think i've given you some great next step ideas and if mm -hmm. i haven't mm -hmm. just before we start questions i just want to put this slide up this is where you can find me whatsapp my email address my facebook handle this is a group on Facebook where I give marketing support to people. It's called KISS members, and we all know what KISS stands for, but it's not Keep It Simple Stupid, it's Keep It Simple Susie. So okay. there you are welcome <laughs> to join that group for some marketing tips and the community of people you can ask questions from and the rest of my social media handles. So over to you, Mel, some questions. Okay, so uh, firstly, I'd like to uh, give a reflection on my own experience and something that I, the value that I drew from your talk today. And that is that um, I didn't really understand that, that in, when I'm in the social network space, that's not where I'm making the conversion. Because I was experiencing some frustration because I wasn't converting on, on Facebook and on Instagram and those places. And I was kind of asking myself the question, what am I doing wrong here? And I didn't realize that that's not where people convert. So thank you so much for that insight for me. That has been very, very helpful because it's, it's taken away my frustration around what I've been doing there to help me realize that, that that's not really where the conversion is going to happen. I may interject. Happen. That yes. knowledge is going to change the value of your content completely. Because yes. you are now going to focus on offering much more value to take people to the conversion. Yes. yes. As opposed to yes. focusing on trying to convert. Yes. So, so thank you. That, that has been hugely helpful for me personally. I appreciate that very much. And then we've had a question from Sorrenta. She's asking, what is a decent size of audience? Sorrenta, this is a big question because... But I can help you with a very simple formula. They say that at any point, 3% of your audience is ready to buy. How scary is that? So if you've got 100 people, 3% ain't going to pay the rent. That should answer your question for you. You need to build your audience so that that 3% is significant enough to grow your business. And it should also, by the way, be growing continuously. You should be constantly topping up that funnel. You can never ignore and let that part of it grow. Uh, let it go. You've got to keep doing this with your funnel. Keep topping up, bringing them down, topping up, bringing them down. 
I hope that helps, Sarinta. Thank you. I've I've had a positive um, comment back from Sarinta. Um, then um, I've had a question. I've I've added a question, um, and Anna has added a question, and they're both around blogging. So, how often should you blog? And my question is, is it better to use a, a, a site that's dedicated to blogging, like Blogger, for example, or is it is it a, a good to blog directly from your website? Okay. Which, so which first do you of recommend? All, how often? As often as you've got something valuable to say. <laughs> so that really doesn't help you. But you need to dig deep to offer real value because – Rubbish content is not going to help you at all, okay? So it's got to be really valuable stuff to keep people reading your blog, but at a minimum once a month. Okay. And that blog is the most amazing content for repurposing stuff. So your blog link then becomes a social media post, and parts of your blog can become individual posts, or... Another way to tackle blog ideas is to go back to your social media to see what people engaged with. What did people really like? Copy and paste those ideas around and then sit quietly and think, how can I create a story or advice or an article around this? Mm -hmm. Then also, if you are on LinkedIn, your blog, you should also copy and paste as an article into LinkedIn. And articles are recommended a minimum of quarterly. So a blog becomes a great source of content that you can repurpose in many ways. Okay. And it should be on your website because you want your blog to bring traffic to your website. Ah, and your okay. website must have Google Analytics installed, a Facebook pixel installed, so that when people come to your website, those analytics are tracking the data of those people so you can use that information for remarketing and ads. Okay. That's that's great information. Um, and then I have a question about email marketing. You you say that email marketing um, we should we should not neglect um, and that it is very, very important. How often do you recommend that we send out an email? Is once a month enough? I personally try to do it once a month only, and only if I've got something really valuable to, to say, do I email more often? Okay. The thing is, it has to once again be really valuable, and that subject line has to light people's minds up. It has to ignite their attention, um, mm -hmm. because if it's boring, they are going to flick by it, and then once a month is really sad, because you're not going to get seen. Mm -hmm. So... I would initially test it mm. and um, again, how much info you've got. And by the way, email marketing does not mean a newsletter in newsletter format, format and it doesn't mean screeds and screeds of information. You can simply send people an email with an idea you just learned or some information you just found or a tip you want to share. You know, mm. think how valuable that is. I've mm. met a few people in recent weeks who said they do not read beyond the fold in an email. Okay. How amazing okay. is that for a tip? So yes. screeds and screeds of mail that people read on a mobile device or a laptop. I think, you know, we always have said that people spend um, more and more people are on mobile devices. I think now that people are working from home, a lot more people are spending a lot more time on a PC. That's okay. my personal opinion. I haven't seen stats. So when I um, promote now, I make sure it's both PC and mobile device as opposed to it used to be a lot of mobile. But think yes. about it as well. How long do you sit on a mobile yeah. device and scroll through a long newsletter or message? It's, mm. it's, it, you Remember the goldfish thing? People concentrate for a few seconds. Keep them mm. interested. Keep it short. Keep it smart. The next time you send your mail, they, they're going likely to have a look and click to open. Okay, awesome. So we want to put the really meaty stuff right at the top that people see it straight away. And what you do is you have your subject line and then your first paragraph of your email tells them what to expect in the email. Okay. 
so that you get the attention right up at the front. There's no fluff, no whatever. This email is going to be about this uh, so that they want to scroll down and look at the rest. That is very useful information. I just want to write it down. Uh, then um, Anna White is asking, how long should your blog be? Um, I've read some should be three pages long. It's, um, um, I'm trying to think now. Um, when you set up an, a, a content page on, on WordPress and you use SEO tools, if your content is shorter than 300 words, it gives you an alert to say add more content. Okay. My sweet spot is between 600 and 800 words. Okay. And, That's useful. Um, That's the number we can work of, with. So, but I would go anywhere from 600 right up to 1,200 and okay. beyond if you've got the content. But vary it. Do over 300. Next target, 600. 600, next target 800, next target 1,200, and test the different blogs. Don't just stick to one little formula. So, so variety really is our friend. Absolutely. Variety in your social media content, your website content, everywhere is what you want because people differ. Mm. Different people read different stuff. And by the way, when one point I didn't make for you, when we talk about when to put your stuff online and we talked about how buyer ready are people, what's their customer journey. The other very important thing to think about with when is where people are in their daily lives. Mm. Are they able to read a blog post when they are commuting in the eight o'clock traffic to work? Or mm. are they more likely to read a blog post when the kids have gone to bed at seven o'clock at night? Mm. Mm. When Makes you know sense. your ideal customer, you can step into there every day and mm. talk into that appropriately. Mm. Makes sense. Then another question that Anna has asked is, uh, she does accounting and payroll. Should her content be relative to her business or will any or anything of interest or should it be helpful? Oh, I love you this. Know, I love this because so many people, I, was, I had a... a lady come through on a coaching call and she's in the legal business so much a similar kind of thing and she's so stuck for content because how much can you bore people with legal stuff mm. so we go back to your ideal customer what interests them mm. what gets their attention what are the challenges they are facing so in that environment where it's about business admin and business life and stuff, things like the Poppy Act and privacy rules, things about interest rates, things about how to optimize the sale of your house, um, things about how to brand your content and look professional. All these things are information that they probably are not aware of and will suddenly go, oh, wow, that's going to help me run a better business. And that mm -hmm. is what they are trying to achieve. That is why you have a job, because they want to be more profitable and run a better business. What else mm -hmm. do they need to do to get that outcome? That's where you're going to add enormous value. So you need to go to groups and follow blogs and Facebook pages that do complementary stuff so follow pages that are not competitive with you but serve the same market and learn what they're sharing and you are very welcome to share their content because it's not competitive it's adding value you're using influencer marketing you're tagging and by the way you don't steal it you tag their pages you thank them for their valuable content that is how you build authority Thank you. That's very useful. And do you recommend that we add a kind of outside links to other things to our blogs? You must. Okay. And just as, but not just one-sided, you have to backlink. So you, as much as you link other stuff, you have to make sure the other stuff links to your website. Ah, because it's, okay. like, it's like a network, like the spider web for Google. Yes. Google follows all the angles. That's why it's called a spider 
because what sends people to your website and where does your website send people? That is okay. all part of search engine optimization and increasing the ranking of your page. So don't just okay. happily tag everybody else. If you, yes. um, for example, one of the reasons to be a guest blogger on somebody else's site, so you can go to a complimentary business and say, I've got a great article I'd like to publish for you. So it has to be unique. You go and publish for them, but your end snippet has to have your web link, your Facebook page link or whatever, so that it brings traffic back to you. Very natural okay. because the, the, the spider will do that. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you so much, Susie. Um, that was really, really insightful. Um, I see we've we've completed all of the questions that have come through. Great. Uh, I've kept you very long. So for those of you who've stayed with us for the course of this thing, I <laughs> thank you for that. I hope I didn't bore you and go on too long. So thank you. For not at all. Not at all. That was that was so interesting and so insightful. I, I really recommend that everybody watch this to the end because um, – you really shared so much value with us today. I'm super thankful. I am thankful to you, Mel, for the opportunity. And I really admire you for the group that you've built. And just before we Thank close you. off, what was what is your main tip for six, building a successful group on Facebook? Um, my, my, my secret's actually quite simple, is make it a public setting if you're creating a group. So, so make it broad, make your topic broad so that lots of people want to come in. It doesn't have to be too niched, like make it really broad so you can get more people in and then make the setting public. A lot of people are afraid with a group to make the setting public for various reasons. I understand if your content is going to be sensitive, like if it's, it's a personal, got to do with personal stuff. Well, like mine is private because it's valuable content. It's normally content I charge for. So there's a tip for you guys who are watching. If you're not yes. in my group, you get a hell of a lot of value there. Because like I'm going to be doing content marketing training in that group weekly. I would yeah, never put yeah. that out publicly. Yeah, but but my, my biggest group has got 66,000 members. And we got there because we made the setting public. And um, it was possible for, for then the search engines to just uh, two-thirds of our new members come from, from Facebook suggestions. Beautiful. Now, Mel, yeah. what if I can give you a tip, you have to start building your email list from that group. And how do yes. you do that? By creating valuable lead magnets. Yes. So people sign up for stuff like these talks. Yes. That is yes. one of your most important tips is getting people to register because if something happens to your group, if something happens to Facebook, that whole audience you have built so successfully is lost. That yes. is my biggest tip about email marketing, guys. You've got to get another contact to take people to the next step because those yes. are the people you can then start marketing to uh, for a group that size. Your big opportunity now is affiliate marketing. Yes. But you can't do affiliate marketing without an email list. Yes, yes. So absolutely. guys, it's a lovely side gig. Build your list. The bigger that list becomes, you have got potentially another business opportunity. Yes, yes. Now just, just expand on affiliate marketing a little bit more. Okay, so um, affiliate marketing, for example, is like I could say to you, Melanie, please would you sell my coaching to your mm. audience? I give you a unique link, which you promote to your audience. Nobody else has that link. So when people buy on that link, I know it has come from you. And mm. we come to an arrangement generally around 30, 70, where you get 30% mm. of what I sell through mm. your link, which is mm. money for jam. All you are doing mm. is sending emails to your audience who already like, know, and trust you. So mm. I am mm. leveraging your trust with your audience by giving you that commission. That's that's great insight. Thank you. And uh, I think I might speak to you about this afterwards. Good. Um, <laughs> once we're offline. Good. Okay. So Susie, thank you so much for that. I appreciate your time and your knowledge so very, very much. Thank you for co-creating amazing content for our group today. 
I appreciate you very much. Pleasure. I will um, give you the link for this to post and also for the people who registered for this talk, you will be, look. please look out next week for November content calendar. And if you come into the KISS group, I will help you use it to generate great content. So there's my gift awesome. to you. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Thank Mel. You, Have a beautiful day. Thank you.